Two Finger here with a, another video. How the heck are you? Uh, coming up to the holidays, we're kind of doing a lot of cleaning, trying to get the place tidied up. And before the apocalypse, get it nice and clean. So I'm going through my wife's bringing out some boxes of some old computer stuff. And this, actually, this idea, I know it's going to sound like I'm you know, telling tall tales here, but I thought, <laughs> I thought about doing this so many years ago. I'm going to say it was 2009. It was this summer day, we were barbecuing, and I was thinking about oscillators, thinking about taking a computer fan and having a, a control to be able to slow that all the way down to a stop and then speed it all the way up to the top speed of its operation. Uh, well, I think that's a motor control is a PWM, pulse width modulation circuit. Uh, so you would have that, and then underneath the fan, you would use a CDS cell or a light sensor. And then you would have a gooseneck, like a bright LED that would shine down on that sensor. But it would be broken every time that fan blade spun and blocked the light from hitting that sensor. Something, all kinds of things like, well, obviously it would produce a rudimentary square wave oscillator. But depending on the light source, like if you could pulse that light or what the shape of the material that the fan blades were made out of, what kind of effect maybe, so, you know. So it's like thinking about this half mechanical, half electronic, like you would add a filter circuit, maybe a ring mod. You could probably come up with some really cool rudimentary timbers. So somebody else, there's the idea, go ahead and, and uh, take care of that for me because I, it's probably going to be a while before I get to that one. That's, that's one that's on my list this massive list of the stuff in the back of my mind. Uh, anyway, uh, taking that same idea further would be to just go ahead and connect the fan, the power wires to the fan, to a quarter inch jack and plug that right into your guitar amp, crank up the gain, and then spin the fan. Uh, because in my train of thought, it would be that, well, any electronic or DC brush motor, uh, the idea is when you feed it current, it produces a revolution It spins. But if you manually spin the motor and provide that revolution, it produces a current. So every electronic motor, in turn, reverse operation, is a generator. Like your alternator in a car, well, it really should be called a generator, because that's what it's doing. It's generating power to put back and charge the battery. Now, thinking that, okay, well, I can take this computer fan and create an oscillator by spinning it, got all kinds of crazy ideas about a belt different than, and then combining, and all, you know, the, other, the first idea, and I'm like, really getting carried away. Well, through tearing apart some hard drives, I had read, you know, uh, the thing about taking a hard drive apart is they use like a weird Torx bit. It's like a security screw, it's a star-shaped driver, not a Phillips screw or a flathead. So you have to have those special bits. Well, I've got them. So, taking apart a hard drive, you can get these like neodymium, neodymium, whatever they're called. They're very strong little magnets that are on these metal plates. And uh, so that's one of the benefits if you have a fried hard drive to take it apart. And as you spin the platter, you see that the bearings and the motor, or whatever hardware that they're using, uh, the, the, they spin pretty good. It seems to me that if you spun an electric fan, there would be a lot more resistance. It wouldn't spin as long. So I was thinking, well, that would be cool. Why not hook up the hard drive to your amp? And it works. It actually does produce a tone. So that's what this project is called. Drop that bass, uh, or drop that bass, if you're from my side of the tracks. Now, what I found today going through... No, initially I ripped apart a bunch of these hard drives, and I, they all seem to have four power connectors for the motor. There is this pallet, or um, what do you call that? Platter. The platter, and that's where the data is stored. And there's something that looks like a record player. I would have the needle. There's one of those things that moves around, and then some of those real strong magnets. So these are always really good fun to take apart. This normally spins at like 75,000 RPM, something ridiculous. That's why these things wear out and die. This is your hard drive. So 
after I had removed some of the actual, I took the whole motor out, and I was like, I bet that thing goes really fast. I'm like, I gotta hook this up to some power, and here, you know, watch what it does. Well, it turns out it needs some kind of weird alternating. There's four, four uh, connections, and I think that the power alternates between those to keep this spinning. So that's what the circuitry is on the back. It's part of that is for proper PWM circuit to power this. And I was never able to do that. Every time I just put 12 volts on it, it went and just kind of straightened itself out. And then you would release the 12 volts and it would relax. And then you would put the 12 volts on and it would go and it's like, you know. So I'm figuring, oh, that was kind of a, you know, kind of a letdown. What you got to do is, you guessed it, you just hook these up right to the quarter inch jack and then run that. Now, I do need to stress right off the bat, the signal is low. Uh, the sound that you get is a bass drop sound. That's what you get. It's a very modern sound effect like in all of the Michael Bay movies when you watch like Transformers, uh, you know, go pew, like, you know, it, the year is 2026 and the man, Michael Jenkins, is up against the army of cyborgs. <laughs> that bass drop sound and you know he's like we gotta get to that space copter now <laughs> you know you hear the bass drop <laughs> I was telling my, my daughter about that bass drop sound <laughs> that the more bass drops in the preview that you hear the lower the rating of the movie <laughs> will be like you know, if there's one bass drop it's probably a four star movie two well you know three and a half stars so that's how you can chart it but if you don't have, if you if you haven't downloaded any uh, dubstep torrents <laughs> and you find yourself lacking in the drop that bass category, go ahead and grab one of your old hard drives and I'll tell you I went through. And if you don't believe me, I went through a few of these today, and there are even more that are in the dumpster and in other locations right now. So I think I did six today that I looked at. And they all have, one of them only had three power connections. So um, they all pretty much had four. And I was thinking, well, you know, it's a low output. I really had to boost the signal. Uh, something about that motor, how it locked up, it's not necessarily as loud. And you know what? I tried the computer fan idea, and that didn't work at all. So it goes to show what I know. I'm sure maybe if I put some kind of a boost on there, like a ridiculous level, maybe I could get something out of it. But this does work really cool, and I will demo it for you. But I'm I'm here to tell you, I tried every connection. You know, I tend to overthink things, so I was switching the polarity. I tried bridging all four together. I tried every wiring combination that exists with two wires and four wire four connections. I tried everything, and every other connection that I did besides just hooking it up <laughs> blindly, none of those worked. If you go to the middle two, eh, it's kind of muted, not as good. And he, all of these optional sounds that are, where it did produce noise were not good or usable in any way as it was compared to just hooking up the first two or the second two. And it doesn't matter, positive or negative. And that is soldered right to a quarter-inch guitar jack with some electrical tape over it for shielding. Now these do have mountable whatever the size computer screw is on, on almost on all of these they've got slots on them. So you could use some plumber's tape and make a little bracket and have this mount onto some kind of drum hardware, reach over and spin that. Or, you know, use some L brackets and uh, build a little plywood like a three quarter inch, spray that flat black and put some felt on the bottom if you've got like a rainy day and you want to get crafty. But you're you're probably going to find that you're going to want to run a boost. Like if you have a preamp, a tube preamp, a small e MPM boost, a show, a ZVEC show, any kind of LPV1, any kind of booster is going to help you out. For this test, I'm running it through a Digitech RP50. PD uses Digitech RP. <laughs> It was four dollars and ninety nine cents at a good one. Like I tried it on all kinds of different things today and found that 
a little bit of auto wah, a little bit of tremolo, a little bit of a reverb sounded just excellent. But you do need something to boost the signal. So it's a punch amp. It's basically one watt, nine volt battery, like a mini amp, uh, going through uh, two 10 inch speakers with a horn. It's pretty sensitive. You can some of those little thumps come through. Uh, drop that bass. A cool little, very cheap. I mean, uh, I have to say, I went through a 20 gig max door, a 40 gig max door, some 80 gig, up to a 250 gig CK. And these were, I'm not like buying hard drives and taking them apart. <laughs> these were all blown. You know, this is all garbage pick stuff that I've collected. That's my junk box of. Uh, PD's hard drive graveyard. So, yeah, what a cool little project. I thought if you were into noise, like I am, and you get together and do little noise things where you have you know, multiple people, each one has a little device, this would certainly be uh, come in handy for a noise thing. Have a drum beat going and drop that bass, drop that bass, you know, get it going. And then have other people filling in the mid range. And the higher registers. So I thought this would be really cool for a noise type of project. You could use this on hip hop. Like if you were a DJ guy, if I was a DJ guy, <laughs> with my hat backwards, <laughs> that's all it would be. There would be no, it would just be that. I would just have this and like the speaker from Michael J. Fox. I would have that. Was that uh, G. Michael Jar uh, Oxygen, that French synthesizer guy from the 70s? So, yeah, uh, if you've got any old hard drives, uh, and they're full of pornography, don't get rid of them. Hook them up like that, get a quarter inch jack, and you can drop that piece. So, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, enjoy your holiday. Most of all, peace.